Okay, so we're bottling the one hour all grain brew. There's um, not much to report in there. As you saw, it's fermented down quite nicely. So pretty good clarity on it so far. It actually smells pretty good too, so I didn't bother um, dry hopping this, but it has got a good aroma there from the hops, so it was a reasonable quantity of hops for 10 litres. Yeah, looking promising. Okay, so the FG came out about 10.09, I think, which um, I was expecting it maybe to come out a little bit higher than that because of the experience I've had before when I've been doing the quick brews. Um, the mash doesn't seem to result in as fermentable a brew as it should be. Now, the target was 1.007, but if you remember back to the original brew video, which I'll just put the link up to again if you haven't, uh, haven't seen that yet, the the mash temp was a little bit higher than intended so it started off about uh, two two or three degrees higher than what I was actually aiming for initially it did drop over the course of the mash but because of that the final gravity is going to be higher anyway so actually I think it's pretty much fermented out as it would do normally with a with a longer mash I would suspect uh, about 3.8 percent so a nice session strength beer the main difference from the shorter mash, as I said before, was the efficiency drop. So that's what's really pulled the um, final ABV down quite a lot. It's just the uh, lower original gravity that we had. So we missed the original gravity by about five points, which is where the drop in percentage has come from. That said, not much of a problem. Um, yeah, it seems to have fermented out well. Quite a good clarity. Let's have a little pre bottling tester so as I said that's pretty decent clarity at this stage and again clarity was one of the things that I've said could potentially be affected by the shorter uh, mash and boil but doesn't seem to be the case in with this one oh it tastes just like beer well hey so yeah um, no obvious issues at this point obviously there's still time for things to go uh, pear-shaped but no uh, no off um, off flavor aromas or anything particularly on the nose that would be a concern yeah and just tastes like warm flat beer at the moment so that's got to be a good sign once it's carved up, hopefully it'll be pretty decent. It certainly seems promising enough at this point anyway. Right, so let's get this bottled up. I would have shoved it into a keg and just force carved it, but um, I haven't got any spare, so they're all full at the moment. Uh, so it's going into bottles. I'm gonna be priming it with just shy of 50 grams of dextrose into nine liters, which should give me 2.1 volumes of CO2, so a decent level of carbonation, but not uh, not kind of lager fizzy or anything. So I'm just going to give that a gentle stir in, and then bottle it up. And uh, yeah, in a couple of weeks I'll do a proper tasting of it once it's carbonated. It shouldn't need much in the way of conditioning, to be honest, because it's a very simple recipe: single malt, just a couple of hops in there. Um, and it's uh, low ABV as well, so lower strength, kind of simple beers like that, I find they're pretty much good to go once they're, once they're carved up. So yeah, see you in a couple of weeks. Right, hello again. So it's actually been just shy of three weeks since this went into the bottle, and uh, I have had a couple of sneaky tasters beforehand, but I won't give away the details just yet. So let's get it into the glass and see how our one hour all grain brew has fared. Well, nice bit of carbonation on there. Good pop from the bottle. 
Let's get it into the glass. So this was a single grain brew with the Cascade and Galaxy hops. So it's quite a light beer colour wise. And just looking at that, first impressions. As I said, good carbonation, so there's a nice head on there. Um, not crazily fizzy, but there's a few bubbles streaming up the glass. There's a touch of a haze to it. It actually, in the bottle, prior to this, looked really, really clear uh, before I chilled it down. So that would indicate to me that that would be chill haze rather than um, anything else. And uh, I don't know whether that could be related to the fact that it's had a shorter mash time or not. Possibly, maybe a few more proteins in there. Um, something like that, or the shorter boil, maybe not as many proteins getting dropped out through hot break or cold break. Possibly, but it's not a major issue. And to be honest, a lot of my beers this early on will quite often have a little bit of a chill haze and some of them much more pronounced than that even. So it's not something that I would necessarily say is definitely down to the um, the shorter timings and even if it is it's not something that particularly bothers me so more important is the uh, flavour and aroma and uh, on the nose there's a little bit more of a floral kind of citrusy aroma there uh, than I was getting when I bottled it up so it's definitely as per usual a little bit of carbonation has really kind of brought the beer to life a bit on the aroma front a little bit of malt sweetness and there's um, that kind of tropical galaxy aroma in the background as well actually smells really quite nice I must say now one of the things that you'd be looking out for with the shorter boil time would be your DMS so that would be coming through as a um, cooked corn kind of smell and taste on the beer I'm not getting any of that um, yeah it's just smells like a nice fruity floral kind of pale ale to me so uh, so far so good and on the flavor again there's no immediate issues jumping out at me there so DMS would be the main one with the shorter boil that most people would say is a likely issue um, not getting any of that kind of corn type flavor um, or aroma there's definitely a little bit more of the grain coming through on the flavor than on the the aroma so it's not um, it smells more hoppy than it tastes but it's still got a really nice citrusy edge to it um, galaxy and cascade I'm just judging on this seemed to work quite nicely as a combination there so you get a nice little kind of citrus bite to it so the classic slightly grapefruity cascade flavors with some more tropical notes from the um, what's the same tropical notes from the galaxy it's pretty good yeah so um, I've got to say no obvious issues to my palate I mean give it to a beer judge Perhaps they might pick out some minor faults, but there's there's nothing there that is smacking me in the face and going, this beer has a problem with it. Certainly no obvious off flavours or aromas. So really, shorter mash, we got a lower efficiency, about 60%, but that's no real issue. It certainly didn't do much harm to the beer in terms of fermentability, so most of the conversion was definitely done because it got down to 009. Um, so really, all I'm just all I'm looking at there is a sort of 10% drop in efficiency based on the same method if I did it for a full hour, which is not a lot. And I worked out that for a batch of that size, it's basically about 25 p's worth of grain based on the amount of base malt that I had to boost it up to reach the um, the target OG. So if I did it again and wanted to hit the higher OG that I was targeting, yeah, literally just another couple of hundred grams of base malt would have to go in. Um, and at the price that I'm paying for the base malt, I used 25 pence. So I'm not going to uh, lose any sleep over that, that's for sure. Um, 
And really, that's the only thing you kind of need to worry about on the on the mash run in terms of the shortened time is drop in efficiency. Um, there's enough conversion there for it to ferment out and make a perfectly decent beer. With the um, shorter boil, as I said, DMS is supposed to be the main thing that you're looking for. Now, I would urge a note of caution with that in that certain malts as far as I'm aware you're definitely going to be more likely to get away with the shorter boil than others so this was a uh, British pale ale malt uh, Baird's uh, I can't remember if it's actually got a particular brand name or not whether it's just their kind of generic pale ale malt I think it's just a generic pale malt most of the pale malts nowadays will be highly modified and will convert readily and not cause you any problems however there may still be some traditional or heritage malts where they're not as well modified they don't convert as quickly uh, they may carry more DMS as well which needs a longer boil to drive it off etc etc so just be careful if you are going to have a go at this with which malts you choose to do it with now I've had one bad experience doing shortened mash and boils and that was actually on a 30 minute mash and boil and that was when I was using pearl malt now I don't know 100% whether uh, the problem I had was because of that, it you know, might have been an infection or something else, but I suspect that the off flavours that I were getting were from DMS in, in that beer, and uh, I believe it might have been because uh, Pearl is a, a more traditional kind of heritage variety which perhaps carries more DMS, I don't know, I'm not sure about the technical details, but uh, that's certainly what other people will say is that you know with most modern malts you should be fine just be a little bit careful if you're looking at some of the uh, older heritage varieties and also um, sort of pills and the malts floor malted uh, malts as well that sort of thing so they may be more susceptible to the DMS and they may not convert as readily but other than that this worked great so short mash short boil save yourself some time I'm not going to do all my beers like this in future. First of all, it's just far too hectic. I enjoy the slow, you know, laid back process of brewing in its, uh, you know, normal time frame, to be honest. But if you're looking at four or five hours, and that's if you can do it relatively quickly, then that's a lot of time to take out of your day. So if you need to squeeze in a quick brew of an evening or at the end of a the day, then go for these shorter mash or boils. The 30 30 method is certainly a, you know, pretty much safe option if you think 15 minutes is still pushing the boat out a little bit too much so I've tried that several times and not had any problems apart from that one brew with the pearl malt uh, but I'd do this again 15 minutes it obviously limits your recipe formulation a little bit but you know if you're doing a beer like this so maybe like a smash beer or something and you just want to try a hop out most of the hops are going to go in late anyway. I've got all the bittering that I needed with, you know, one addition of hops at five minutes. Chuck it in, cool it straight down at the end. No issues. And this has got a decent amount of hop flavour to it. It's not, um, you know, it's a, not a massively sort of hoppy IPA or anything like that. But um, it's a decent. I guess I would put it between a sort of American Pale Ale and an English Golden Ale level of hoppiness. Um, very refreshing. Quite a nice beer actually. I mean it's not the best that I've ever made, but I didn't really go into it with the intention of trying to, you know, brew a fantastic beer or anything. It was just an experiment and it's come out, you know, just as good as many of the other beers that I've spent lots of time uh, formulating the recipes for. So that's about it really. I'll leave it at that. I'm calling it a success. So. Give it a go, guys. Cheers. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino.